Okay, so this is the problem. You got a uh, mattress here with a uh, instrument cluster that when you put the key in and turn, you don't see anything on the display. If you take a flashlight up to it, you do see something. So the backlight in the display is gone. Now Mercedes wants to sell you a new cluster, um, which is around uh, 1500 Canadian, which is, you know, it's not terrible, but if we could do it for less, why not? So first things first, go ahead and pop out this trim. It's just uh, kind of held in here with some clips. Uh, take care around here. Don't bend this trim down because this little stick goes all the way through to the instrument cluster. So, put some force on it, pop it out, just like that. And it's gonna be attached with the leather, leather piece at the bottom, so don't uh, pull on it, but take that little piece out and set it aside. And then you wanna get in there with a T25 Torx and undo those two bolts at the bottom there. So there's gonna be one right there and one right there. Bolts loosened up. You'll notice that they're still in there because they have those little clips around there, so you can't lose them. Just reach in behind the cluster and pull it out. So it's just gonna come right out. <clears throat> when you pull it out, you might have to fiddle with the trim and stuff a bit, but eventually you'll be able to pull it out just like that and there's only one connection on the back and this is a pretty st standard connection for a German car just so just push the top in like that and then pull the lever down like that and the connection will come free there you go so that's the cluster out then we're gonna head inside um, remove these bolts right here, or screws rather. Now that we're inside, I've removed these four screws right here. They're all the same length, so don't worry about them. So they're going to go right here, right here, right here, and right here. Um, and they are a tiny little T7. So a T10 will almost fit in there, but T7 is what you need. And then now we're just going to go around, undo all of these clips, as you can see which is going to be a bit fiddly, and then remove the back half from the front half. So go ahead and show you all the clips are on. So it's one, two, three, um, four, five on the side, six, seven. Um, and what I kind of did was I just went around with these plastic pry tools, and I kind of stuck one in between each part and worked around the whole thing, got it off. It's a bit of a hassle, but you'll figure it out. And then there's one more sneaky clip right here. So watch out for that one. This part is not going to, it's going to be loose now, so... Don't lose that either. Um, set that off to the side. You can clean that up if you want on the inside or whatever. Um, but what we're worried about is the uh, the actual gauge cluster now. So to remove the screen, it's going to be kind of held in with some clips on either side, but also it's overlapped by this um, sheet on either side. So get in there with some uh, plastic pry tools and um, what you want to do is depress all these clips and bring the screen up. Okay, so again, <clears throat> let me show you what I did. I went in here with a little um, plastic pry tool, picked up the edge on this sheet, and then kind of rolled it down all the way. Got the glue undone a little bit. Don't worry too much about that. And then I stuck a screwdriver in between these uh, tabs and I just pried it out. Don't go too far down because you'll notice if you go too far down you're gonna hit the board and you might knock off one of these components which would be a really uh, unfortunate thing for, 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 for you to do. Anyways so this is the back of the screen now and as you can see we have a uh, ribbon cable. I'm gonna pop it off by just getting in here flat blade or something like that I believe the way to do this is to push it, but I think we might have to pull it up, actually. So, yeah, pull it up. 
and the whole cable should want to slide out. So the cable kind of goes like it goes in. So you're going to want to pull it out like that. This is the part that we're going to be replacing this LCD with. It is um, from minitools.com. And that's the part number. I'm going to leave it linked in the display as well, or in the uh, description as well. Um, this company, very good. Really fast shipping, and the packaging and everything was excellent. And um, I'm just going to pull the screen out. And um, as you can tell, so far they appear to be pretty much identical, but we're going to pull it out of the plastic and then put it in. See how it goes. So it's pretty good. So this is our new unit, as you can tell. This is the Mini Tools logo right here. This is the one off the original one. Funny thing is, it looks like there's a spot to put that sticker on this one. So I think this is pretty much a original display. If you look at it, they're identical in every every way. Like perfect. You might notice that black stripe. That's just a part of this. So don't worry too much about that. Um, what we do have to do. Um, get underneath this one, pop the cable out just like we did on that side. So it's kind of like a, a lever that comes up. And I might try to do it on the camera so you guys can get an idea of that if you didn't see it properly the first time. Lever that comes up, and then you take the ribbon cable and you pull it out. So that's really good. You guys got a good picture of that. And then we're going to reinstall it on the new one. Okay, so as you can tell here, we have the display reinstalled with the ribbon cable. You kind of want to put the display in like that, and then we're going to peel this sheathing up again, and then push this display in. So the idea is you get it locked in on that side first, pull this black plastic up, and get this underneath it. Okay, screen's installed now. You'll get that eventually. This was a real pain. Unfortunately, it did damage that a bit, but I think that it'll be hidden by this uh, by this um, uh, surround. So I'm gonna get this back on. Uh, mind that, because it's gonna go into that. So um, what I'm gonna do is put this down, face down, and then put that on from the top. Put this uh, plastic part face down then the whole cluster came on top. You do have to mind that because there is like a, you can tell that there's a, a indent, or not rather an indent, but like a, a flat spot on the top. So you can actually move it from the other side if you have to um, get it positioned. So you'll see on the board that there's a, there's a position it wants to be in and then you can move it from the other side to get it into that position. Okay, screws back in. I'm gonna throw it in the truck and see if it works. So here we, here we are a little while later. Um, didn't get a chance to film until it was a little bit later in the day, but cluster is uh, working again. So just an update, that screen didn't actually work for a little while after I plugged in the cluster, but it started working after that and it's been fine for the rest of the day. So I'm not too sure uh, why that was, but it is working and it's staying on all the time. Before it was flickering on and off intermittently. So I'd say that's a success. If we flip on the uh, ignition, we can go through all the modes Everything is working the way it should. So, hope that helped you uh, helped you out if you're experiencing the same problem.